Spending money is inevitable, but when you don't have the funds to buy something that you need, you have to get creative. I was studying at university and had my laptop, which was most of my net worth, was tied up in this computer, and I dropped it on the power plug, and it was loose, and I couldn't quite charge my computer, and I couldn't afford to pay someone to fix it, so I took it apart to try to fix it myself. That was how Kyle Weens realized he could save money by fixing what he already had, but it wasn't easy. The service manual wasn't online, so I muddled my way through the repair, I managed to get it fixed, and I really wrote up some instructions, put them online on how to do it so the next person wouldn't have to suffer. And that's how iFixit.com was born, a website that has grown to include thousands of different free repair guides. And the goal is to kind of figure your way through how to fix just about anything. But Kyle says if you keep certain principles in mind, you could save money by buying smarter. The first step starts before you even purchase an item by thinking about the cost to fix it. We take apart every new gizmo when it comes out. So right now uh, in the room right there, we are taking apart the Samsung Galaxy S23 that just launched. People like Kyle have already done the homework to learn the most common issues people have with products. We're taking it apart so that you don't have to the first time so you know, hey, is this a phone that, that is going to be easy or cheap or expensive to fix? if I buy it and then need to do service on it a couple years down the road. For example, say you're thinking of buying a new gaming system. We have some repair guides are just used over and over. Uh, the picture behind me here, that's a PlayStation. The PlayStation 3 had a particular problem called the yellow light of death, and we had over a million people use that repair guide to fix their PlayStation. Because when the PS3 came out, you had to shell out 500 bucks. And if it stops working, you'll be spending another 500 on the PS5. Or you can fix the one you already own for less than $30. It's almost always cheaper to fix something, uh, particularly if you're doing it yourself. The next secret to saving is... Look and see if you can get repair parts for it before you buy it. If you can't find repair parts, don't buy it. The old adage that you buy cheap, you buy twice becomes a reality when the parts to fix it aren't available. So your only option is to buy new. There's real truth to that. The final piece of advice is... Anything that you're looking at buying that has a battery, think twice. Because batteries don't have an infinite lifespan, and many aren't replaceable. I see today you can buy smoke detectors and say we have a 10-year lifespan on the smoke detector. The batteries aren't swappable, so that's a smoke detector that's being sold that is disposable after 10 years. He says you should definitely think twice when buying anything with a battery that's glued into the device. You know those like expensive Bose headphones? Those have batteries that Bose doesn't have a plan to replace. They just want you to throw it away and buy a new set of expensive headphones every couple of years. Batteries are like built-in obsolescence. They wear out, just like the tires on your car or the battery in your car. The difference is, of course, you can swap the battery in your car, but with many electronics, you can't. We're learning to buy smarter by thinking long-term at the top of the list.